Hey everybody! Welcome back to another Friday Art and Chill. How's everyone doing? As you can tell from the stream title, we're not done with these market stalls just yet, so I'm just gonna continue working on them. Hi Vivek! How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much. Um, I've been working a lot on some of the other projects that we're doing right now. So I didn't really have the time to, to work on, on this portfolio or like on this piece. But that's okay. I was kind of hoping to find some more time to, to work on this, but it didn't in the end. So here we are. Let's have a look. So I think... I think this stall is in a good position. I like this stall as well. This stall is also... We need to do some polishing on it. But I think that one is also pretty good. Let's, let's line them all up, right? This guy... This one is very basic. Like, these two are very basic, I should say. So we definitely need to do some work on these. These are these are going in the right direction. Definitely need to do some polish, but... Yeah. These two are very basic. So we basically need to do the pass that we did on these ones as well, where we kind of... We kind of implement logic, right? And, like, structural logic to it. Uh, and we definitely need to do some tweaks on this guy. But yeah, how are you doing, Vivek? Put the live chat as well. Let me grab. It is time! Yes! We're back at it again, Sarah. Also, new playlist? Uh. No, like this, this is um, still from the old playlist, but I did add like a bunch of new tracks to it though. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. I do need to reorder them. So maybe I do that real quick. It will be awesome. Okay. Doesn't scroll up. Because I want... Oh, there we go. Yeah. I want all my medieval songs in the right order, please. Vivek is working on some freelance stuff. Nice. Is it uh, under NDA? I'm assuming it is, if you're working on freelance stuff. Um, Where are we looking? Marcus Stalls. So these, these guys have thatched roofing as well. I do, I do like, I do like these little, little sections. Like a little, little shelves. Maybe, maybe we'll implement that as well. This little stall is looking cool? Yeah! Yeah, I got a bunch of cool ref. Like, this is from... <laughs> this is actually interesting. This is pretty good ref that I found, and it's from a company called Ely Hire. You can kind of see it. Um, But they are... They are a company that does props for movies. And they have, like, a whole bunch of, like, these really cool, like, medieval-looking stalls. I was like, oh, that's, like, a great way to find, like, ref. Obviously, you gotta, you gotta pay, in, pay attention to, like, the authenticity of it, right? So you gotta keep that in mind. But, yeah. So it's a good find. 
Hi, the apples. How are you doing? Let's see. So we're gonna we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup on this guy. Let's have a look at the other ones. Good and you, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm doing good too. Ready to do some more work on some stalls. I've been working on another project during the week. I've been I've been making different types of concrete and asphalt and like. Uh, little bits to to make like decals like road decals so i've been busy mm -mm. what are your viewport settings in blender to get a good preview of your textures my viewport settings or shader settings because, I mean, viewport settings, they're pretty basic. I got AO turned on and screen space reflections, but I don't think they do too much. Uh, and then up in here, I just have my background, like, really blurred out so that it doesn't become, like, too distracting. Right? Because if you have this, then it doesn't, doesn't really help. In the world opacity, I've set that really low as well. Uh, okay. Roughness and metallic just looks so weird in Blender when I just preview it with Eevee. Um, yeah. I don't I don't pay too much attention to like the roughness maps. The main the main thing that I'm trying to get right is just because you'll see that the roughness here is completely off. I don't care. Um it's mainly just to get a to get a feel of how the texture is applied, right? And then I know that it's gonna be more or like correct in in Unreal. Because that's what matters anyway, right? So I don't pay too much attention to how Blender renders it. You could technically spend a whole bunch of time making it look real nice, but then what's the point? You know, if you're not going to do your renders in there anyway. I hate this bug where I just want to stack these islands, not like a random island next to it. Does Zen UV actually have a stacking mode? Does that one work? Oh yeah, that doesn't work at all. What? <laughs> Oh, will it only stack similar? Stack that fiction. See, and then it does the same thing here as well. Like when I stack these three islands, which is just like these ends. It also stacks this one for for some reason. Like what? Man, I don't get this. That is so frustrating, and it's happening since forever. So, just, just gonna keep moving on with life. But I mostly need base color and normal to preview my stuff, but one was wondering if you had a different setup. Nah, exactly that. Like, base color and normal, that's all you need. Like, I do plug in my, my roughness maps, but... Pfft, yeah. No... No real point to it, really. 
Like maybe maybe only to get like a little bit of variation, but Wanted to get your opinion on something. What do you think about making fan art environment to enter in a specific studio? Um, that's a good question, Diapples. Um Totally fine. Um you can you can definitely make fan art uh of of like a certain project or a certain studio, right? Um what I would do is I would see how you would add your own spin to that fan art. Because I think if you make fan art, you're you're showing that you really wanna work in that studio, right? But then if you put your own artistic spin on top of it, and ideally it would improve upon the, the the product right that's where you bring real value to the company rather than replicating what they were what, what they already had right um yeah like you don't necessarily have to make like your full own version right but you could make you could take a concept that they have for example and then infuse it with a couple of your own ideas so that you have the best of both worlds that could be that could be an option Thank you so much for the question, the apples. Um, if you're if this is your first time being in the chat, feel free to shout out like any questions that you might have as well, or any discussion points that you've seen. Because my dream studio is a sobo, so I want to make something about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Making something for a Sobo is really interesting because they have a pretty diverse portfolio. So when you're taking a Sobo, for example, it becomes really interesting, right? Because you could almost... Because they have Plague Tale, right? I think that's made by a Sobo, if I'm right. Um, that's pretty straightforward. But they also they also worked heavily on... Microsoft Flight Simulator as well, right? Or am I am I missing that up? Studio Asobo. Yeah. So they did, yeah, Plague Tale and Microsoft Flight Sim. So if you want to do something for Tale, then see see how you can improve upon their things right like look at the game see see what is missing or maybe i don't know maybe make i don't know if this is available for plague tale right but sometimes you have concept art that never made it into the game could be like a really interesting thing for you to uh implement or like recreate Because if you really think about it, right, like, I would find it, like, really interesting to, if I'm working on a game, and there's, like, all these concepts that are not being used, and then you see someone who wants to become a part of your studio, and comes up, or, like, finds one of those missing concept art pieces, and then, like, recreates them, that would be awesome. Yeah, I've got no idea if they have any of that. Yeah, usually, usually the stuff that is going to be out there and available to the public is going to be stuff that's going to be released anyway. Because you never know if those things might end up in like the second one or the third one, right?
That is cool, though. I think it could be a good idea. Just make sure... Make sure to indicate that it's fan art, right? Um, because one... One of the pet peeves that a lot of people have, including myself, to a certain... Or like, gripes, let's call it that. One of the gripes that I have is... People... People making fan art and then making the word fan art so small that it's like it's a deceptive tactic. Because sometimes you, you click on it and you're like, oh, this is from the game. And then it's like, oh, but why Why does it look so different? And then you realize it's fan art and it's like, oh, God, okay. Damian, hello! You don't, you don't want to be deceptive at all, right? Because I think... I mean, it's going to cost you points. I don't even think that it's only my opinion on that. Where's my little... Floaty boy? Hi, Jay! How are you doing? Let's see. I mean, that's like a very specific artist gripe, you know, but still there. So where, where is that going to connect? So that's going to be connecting in there. Do we do stuff in the middle as well? Maybe. And then what I'm gonna do, because I'm lazy, I'm just gonna hide all of this. I am gonna go into transform, randomize. Nope, not that direction. I wanna... This direction, and then... Like a 1.2. Scale it even. Yeah! Let's get some randomization going. Jay's doing good, Friday. Early finish, then I can do some more work and hopefully finish my hammer asset this weekend. Hell yeah! Do it! Oh, oh is it still... Hmm. We do have to some of this stuff in order though like especially where everything is going to connect right First week of surviving the plague, most annoying summer cold. Oh shit, sorry to hear that man. Hopefully you get over it soon.
where does your playlist come from? The Witcher? Uh, no, this is all... Um, there's a playlist called... What is it called again? Like, Riot Creator Safe Playlist? Let's have a look. The official name is... Yeah, Riot Games Creator Safe Playlist. So, I just basically took all the medieval sounding ones and put them in this playlist. That's what I've been using on every stream. Oh. Yeah, great. They are cool. Yeah, I know. Makes such good music. Touch up some of these edges as well. So we have the geometry to do so anyway. happened here what oh my god what happened Yeah, what is everyone else working on? So we got the apples probably starting starting a, a fan art project. Sarah might be working on her project as well. Jay is working on the hammer. Well, after work. What is everyone else working on? Have you started with the, the fan art project, by the way, the apples? I wish. Wait. Why not, Sarah? Or is my stream putting you to sleep again? Sorry. <laughs> uh, Textile density. What are we doing? Oh. Oh, yeah. I saw that in the Discord. Wait, what happened? Did it break or? Oh, this side is also f pretty fucked up. How did that happen? Probably me scaling the stuff down or something like that. Wait, so... Yeah. Give it for repair cleaning stuff. Oh, okay. done don't need this oh no it's fine let 
Making a wooden trim sheet. Let's go. How are you getting along with your trim sheet then, the apples? Everything working out fine? Let's close that off here. Probably... We want to extend it a little bit lower down, right? Incremental changes. All about we're getting we're getting a lot of character in this guy though. Like I like it. Like it's starting to feel real nice. I think we can make some some easy wins when we start like slightly moving some of this stuff. Let's reward this guy. Hi, Samantha. Welcome back. How are you doing? Okay, let's go. Medieval again. There we go. Let's see, this stuff all kind of makes more sense. And a little bit of intersection here, but that's all good. add to it it's interesting i should probably figure that out then not now though some pottery maybe i'll make like a couple of Variations of pottery. This is always a song that kind of reminds me of The Witcher, just with like the flutes. Such a Witcher vibe to it.
Doing good, and you? Yeah, thank you. Been doing good. Been uh, been working a lot on on another project that we're currently building with like a bunch of other people. So spent most of my time there this week. Been having a lot of fun making making road decals and like making concrete and all that kind of stuff. It's for that I asked you if it came from The Witcher. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you know what this is missing though? Like it's missing like the little rooftop on top of it, right? The little the little thatch rooftop that we're we're kind of getting here um i think i have that in my other scene i don't even know Whee. Mm. Separate this out a bit. Move all of this. Oh, thatch in here as well. Nice. It's good. It's gonna be. It's gonna be pretty tricky to make it as good as in here, though. that yeah so i think i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go like a little bit more bushy like we're gonna go for full meshes instead But it means how are we gonna do that so if i take this make a volume out of it thick and maybe we could do like a stepped kind of approach and then we just map Oh, wait. Um, hold up. Let's clear scenes, be sharp. Oh, I hate that everything has like this bevel weight on it. And then we're going to do select sharp. Mark that as a scene. Unwrap it. Thank you. Set the textile density. Orientate them to the world. Rotate it. Stuff doesn't matter, like just if it's on the title, it's fine. This, you go specifically on this area because that's where the end pieces are. 
and the sides. They kind of have to follow the directionality of the of the thatch a bit, right? Or should I put them here? Nah, I think I think we're better off like having them follow the directionality. And what we'll do, we'll make this round as well. Because now we have base. Right, and then if we do something like this. a little bit of an overhang. But let's not worry about that too much because we're still we're still defining the main shape first. Right? Still have to define that. About that Italian stock music? What? You don't even know what you're talking about, Sarah. Let me find it. <laughs> And then we're going to map these three islands onto this end section as well. Oh, do that. Something's not right. Yeah, that's better. Right, we get like this transition from like the straight stuff onto like the end pieces. And then we just need to kind of add additional stuff on top of it to make it look good, right? That's why I wanted to do the main shape first. Push that inside.
Hello, Daniel. How are you doing? Terra is talking about like a very specific Italian stock song. Tarantella Napoletana. I think there was um I got what is it? Like I can I haven't listened to it, right? Um But I think there must be like so many Italian brands because now I'm thinking about like Italian commercials, right? For like pasta or like pizza or whatever. And like they, they all have the like stereotypical like Italian tune attached to them. Might even be that one, right? You imagine like making that like used by like companies to make like millions of dollars and you, I don't know, just put it on there for like couple of euros <laughs> so weird pretty well known yeah thank you to Predator for subscribing appreciate that give the sides a little bit more character as well so Yeah, the edges were always going to be the tricky part. That's not, it's not going to look particularly well. Let's keep it. It's better than nothing. Definitely need to do some adjustments to it, but it's not great. Not yet, at least. I'm using an opacity mask, yep, for the transparency. Exactly. Let's add it to it. Let's have a look in the engine. Oh my god, the dash looks so different in here.
Did I... I update the texture. Hello? Oh. Hey. Oh, this is still pulling from like an old... Old location. Uh... Tidables. Hey, textures. This is a normal. Yeah. Oh my god. What's happening with that? I guess it doesn't matter too much, but it's weird. Base color. Let's replace this guy as well then. And do the same for what did I call my opacity because it doesn't seem to be linked to the base color. Let's have a look alpha. Oh, no, that's the wood kit. Put the alpha in the ORM. It's weird. I guess there you have your answer. It's not in the base color, it's in the ORM mask for some reason. I was just being lazy. Hmm. <gasps> That looks so gross. <laughs> Hi, Alan. Oh my god, why did it do that? Oh, I, I removed one of my slots. Oh, yeah, because I switched materials. Mm. No, that's the wrong one. Attach. There we go. How are you doing, Alan? Yeah, this stuff over here. It's too scaled up, so... The issue with that is... Or we have to make like single tufts. What we do. Hi, Ephraim. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much. Can't scale it up too much. I need to be a bit more. I think selective. About to head on to my school to help with a game art workshop. Oh, nice. How are you going to be helping out? Are you going to be teaching people? It's exciting, man. Currently, this kind of feels like a dead end, like this approach, but I don't know. Like, what? What we're kind of missing 
I kind of want to have like a curve going on. Because now, now we have the, the front of the thatch leaning over and then the sides of the thatch, but there's like nothing in between them to connect it. So we kind of want to, we're going to, we want to have more of a curve so that it kind of fans out. I think that would be like a better approach to it. So let's see let's this. Yeah, and help with any softball questions that some students may have. That's awesome. Have fun. Make sure connected only. It's all good. Hey, George, how are you doing? It's nice to see so many people hanging out. Everyone's doing well. Good, good being alive. As always, good to see that you're alive. I kind of I kind of want to try something because I feel like the the underside of it is pretty flat. Mm, let's see. Let's see if something like this could maybe help give us like a little bit more definition. I think we're gonna move it up around some of the beams a little bit. What does that look? Without it, then. Didn't look particularly better, honestly. Every time I use alpha brushes in ZBrush, it rounds slash curves the surface, even with a tiny bit of Z intensity. Is there any way to avoid this? Um, the first thing, the first thing where I would look is to look if the alpha brushes are properly set up, as in the values need to be perfect, right? Because as soon if there's like a little bit of white on the edges of the alpha, that's gonna push up the surface. So make sure that those are set up correctly. That would be my first bet. For any for any more specific stuff related to ZBrush, I'm probably not going to be that helpful because it's been 
over five years, I think now. It's been five years? Yeah, I would I would say like five years since I've used ZBrush. Yeah, if people in the chat wanna wanna give any comments or like any any suggestions, that would be awesome as well. The apples is saying try to take surface in the brush settings. What are you doing? Go. Is that a little bit better then? I feel like we definitely need like an edge more here, but. On a different note, I got a palm master material to work well, but I struggled to get it get it to vertex paint. Yep. That's what a lot of struggle to work with, like a lot of people struggle with. Um I think I think Eloy actually has Eloy C in the community chat has actually the same issue. If um if I'm remembering correctly, right? I think we talked about it. Uh <coughs> Is it Eloy? Yeah. Yeah, Eloy was running into the same issue. Um, it's never, in my opinion, or like in when I was trying to, to work with it, like it's never going to be perfect. Um, so don't try to get it to look perfect, but you can definitely get it working though. Like I've, I've set up like multiple parallaxing, blendable minimal materials i think the key there is that you need to make sure that your height maps have some sort of consistency where where they blend so that means that um what's the best way of explaining this like if if you have like a height map that goes from like full black to full white and has another one that goes from like I don't know, 70% black to, to white, then there's going to be a mismatch in how they're going to be blending together, right? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, it's never going to look perfect, I think. I think that's just one of the unfortunate... Um, limitations, I think. Another thing that you can look at is, do you really need parallax on any of your layers, right? And then just be, and then just be smart about which one is gonna have parallax and which one isn't. Because sometimes you just don't need parallax on all your layers. Hi Rory, how are you? Thank you, I'm doing good. How are you doing?
looking looking to add like a little bit more volume here because especially this guy in front is is pretty flat as well I'm trying to get palm on my main brick shader at the moment and it kind of felt like it would look funky without palm on the other layers. No, you don't need palm on everything. Honestly, like... Even though it's like a fancy feature, right? You don't need it. Like, with a lot of with a lot of more shallow stuff... Um, and also depending on... on the grooves between your bricks... Your... Your mileage may vary with palm, right? Like you can you can easily do stuff with with your normals as well. I mean, it does look fancy, right? Like, oh, hello. Got this nice green road running through my thing. I mean, it can look good, but you don't need it on everything, right? Like. That's Geo, I think that is Palm, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but even CIG, right? Like they, they use mainly titleables. Like titleables without Palm, they just add decals with Palm on them, right? So, I mean, I don't know if they have more natural environments, right? Where they have brick walls. I'm assuming that they use Palm on that anyway, because it's such like a staple of that game. So yeah, 100% right there. Yeah. Don't need it on everything. Uh, What was I going to do here? Oh yeah, I wanted to mirror this. Because I just couldn't be bothered. And we're just gonna straighten out these UVs. Right, so now kind of have a little, little bit of a more interesting shape. Bomb on everything. I mean, to be fair, they do use it on everything, though. I think they even use it on their weapons and all that stuff, too. Yeah, CIG does go crazy with their palm. But I mean, their palm also looks way better than what you can achieve out, out of the box with Unreal. Like, the stuff that they do with their palm looks insane. Oh, Rory, sorry. That's a great question. Uh, POM stands for Parallax Occlusion Mapping. 
So it's basically, let me give you an example. Uh, where is my wall? So if I just grab a stone wall. You can see that this stone wall looks like it has let me let me smoothen it out for you. This this stone wall seems to be having like a lot of geometry on it, right? Because it has like a lot of surface definition. But that's actually because it just uses parallax occlusion mapping to fake that. So this is this is actually just like a wall that's flat but it's actually the texture that's faking it and i can kind of can i can show you how that works so we got the, the height ratio here if i put that to zero that's what a normal texture would look like with just a normal map right but then as we increase the, the height ratio, it's going to use the height map. It's going to use this texture to then push out or uh, push in the geometry. So um, your middle gray value is not going to move. And everything that is more that is brighter than that middle gray value and goes to white, it's going to be pushed out. And everything that's going to go to black is going to be pushed into the surface. So it's kind of it's kind of faking that detail. And that's also where you you might have seen this little reference plane in here. That reference plane stands for where you want the neutral value to be. Because I was talking about middle gray, right? So that refers to 0 0.5 because it's in between 0 and 1 when it comes to the black and white spectrum. So if we were to change that up, I can set it to zero. And then it's going to push all the values out because now the base value is black. And if I then invert that, I set it to one so that the main reference point is the white value is going to push everything into the surface. So it's a little bit. I mean, I went into like the, the technical details a little bit more, right? But what you need to remember is that um, parallax occlusion is basically going to give you perceived depth of a texture based on a height map. Do they have a proprietary setup for POM? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like their POM looks really nice, like no stepping. Um, and they also have, and they also have, um, they have surfaces that come out of, out of, um, out of the geometry that look really nice. Brody is also asking, it doesn't need subdivisions, right? Nope. It's purely based on the texture. So this is different because you're talking about tessellation, right? So tessellation will actually be the, the geometry approach of this technique where you would still use a height map, but you, it will actually displace like the, the vertices of the mesh, right? So it will actually do it in real geometry. That's why it's also so expensive because it's going to offset like all the vertices on a mesh. And usually to make it look really good, you need a lot of it, right? Hendrik is coming in. What's the topic or the discussion? We're talking about POM, parallax occlusion mapping. And I was just making, making a comparison between POM and tessellation. So like the... Parallax occlusion mapping is the cheaper equivalent because you don't need, you don't actually need geometry to support it. So that's how you would get it to work for a displacement map instead of just height. Um, yeah, I mean, 
they they use the same input right like a displacement map and a height map basically does the same thing they just have different applications in their workflow right like a displacement map usually refers to um like tessellation right like a tessellation workflow where you use like real geometry whereas a height map usually refers to the the parallax occlusion approach in most cases but technically they're the same the same map Because ideally what you would do in both situations, right, is you do the large shapes in your height map and then all the smaller detail you put in your normal. That's another another trick. Uh, where was I? Market stalls. Thank you so much for the question, Rory. Because I know that sometimes we just get carried away with just using these words as they're normal, so... Thank you so much for asking that question. Let's have a look. Thank you for the exhausting, exhaustive approach. Sorry. It wasn't exhausting. <laughs> no worries. That's why I'm here, you know? I mean, I'm I'm doing my own thing. I'm I'm making my own environment, right? But like the one of the main things why I'm here is just to to help people understand environment art. So feel free to ask any questions. I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna randomly offset all of this. So if we do, where is it again? Oh no, this is actually in one of the tools, right? Um, I have it in here. Randomize. There we go. Oh, randomize on this axis, please. Thank you. Let's also do the same thing for this guy. Hey, buddy. With Geo being cheaper nowadays, is it better to go the tessellation route? It depends what you mean with tessellation. If you are converting it to actual geometry, and if you are using Nanite, yes. If you are doing real-time tessellation, no. Because the amount, the amount of geometry that you would need for some more detailed maps to put it all in geometry is still... It's still unfeasible, right? Even though we do have Nanite now available to us, right? But you need to keep in mind that Nanite is not a workflow that is implemented with a lot of companies, right? So when you're doing, when you're making a Nanite or like when you're making stuff for Nanite, you're already limiting yourself to like a, a number of companies. So I want I want to be careful with that. So it would be good to show both. I would not show Nanite. At this point, no. The reason why is because Nanite even though it uses a different workflow, like it's, in my opinion, way less technical to to just make it look good, right? If we if we don't have to worry about like all the technical restrictions and all the performance restrictions within Nanite and Lumen and all those interplay of systems, then it's still better to go with the standardized workflow that all the companies use rather than 
trying to show them both off. It's my opinion on that. Ooh, sorry. Getting some... Because, in my opinion, if, let's say, let's say if you're going 100%, right? If your portfolio is only Nanite, you are taking a bet that you're going to be getting a job at a company that also uses Nanite. Like, to the full extent. Right? And right now, at this point, even though, what was it? 50% of, like, the... Upcoming AAA games use Unreal Engine 5. That doesn't mean that they're going to be using Nanite in that, right? Because one of the bigger topics and one of the big things that Unreal Engine is trying to fix is getting Lumen and, well, I think especially Lumen uh, to run at 60 FPS. Uh, because that was like a really big struggle point. And I think they're making really great advances. But we'll see if that actually translates into like Nanite and Lumen being used by a lot of AAA studios. At this point. But I would... Yeah, there's for me, there, there would be no reason to limit yourself only to Nanite studios. Or like studios that use Nanite. Rather than trying to captivate like the entire market. Or like market as in the the amount of studios that you can apply your skills towards, right? Why is this still boot up? Thank you for your answers, Tim. Gonna head out now. Have a great day. Thank you. Have fun. And thank you for the questions as well. Okay, so. It is a very interesting topic, though. Because also you have to see it from the perspective that I take on this is I want to, with the advice that I'm giving or like with the stuff that I say on this stream specifically, right? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you the best chances of getting a job in the industry as possible, right? Whenever I say anything. Because if I were to say, nah, just go for Nanite, like I'm taking a huge bet and I don't. In the grand scheme of things, like, I don't want to take that bet at this point. Especially in my advice. Uh, what am I going to put on here? Little tub. Gotta have a chair. What else do we need? What is it? Anyone else's opinion on that? Like, um, maybe maybe I'll ask a question to to the chat now. Um, hmm. What kind of question would that be? Be an interesting thing to talk about because <laughs> yeah like who who currently is working with nanite let's start there 
Like, is anyone experimenting with Nanite workflows at this point? Or maybe what's your current current point that you're experimenting with? Like your current skill? Oh, I wanted to make some shells for the back end as well. Let's do that too. Let's shrink these guys up as well. Sarah is avoiding nanite like the plague. Makes sense, makes sense. Don't want to get used to it and go crazy with my poly count. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Hmm. Well, like, that's the thing, right? Like, visually, it's impressive. But then if you don't know how to optimize anything, right? Like, how are you going to be working on games that don't use that, right? Like, don't use that workflow. That's always the biggest thing for me. And I had to work with, like, really strict... Um, really strict poly counts before. I've looked at it a bit, and I've seen how artists create assets for Nanite, but personally, I haven't used it. Awesome. Nope, I would just go against everything they taught me. It would go against everything they taught me. Um, then I've only seen it at work in combination with Quixels for now. Yeah, you you would have to you would have to change your approach when it comes to the texturing of it as well, right? Um, Because the main the main benefit, and this is this is something that uh, Epic outlined in their breakdown for it as well, where they said, "Hey, look, Nanite is more performant, especially when it comes to like disk size, right? But that's only because they don't use like a normal map anymore, right? Because it's all geo now, so you can you can optimize it on like the on the texture end of it." Because geometry is is cheaper, right? Cheaper as in memory, like actual actual disk size, let's say. Um, so that's definitely true. But yeah, then you'll have to texture it in a completely different way. Where okay, not using a normal map anymore. Um, we're dealing with like very very dense very dense geometry right so if you want to texture it let's say inside a substance designer um let's say a substance painter it's gonna be very tricky right because we're dealing with like multi-million like in some cases like polygon assets now so i think it can do it but just the the iteration speed because of your working with like these massive sizes is going to be increased as well so yeah, there's like a lot of interesting aspects to this. That is pretty nice for photogrammetry. Yeah, like that's the thing, right? Like if you are doing anything non-game related, right? Or if you're doing a game that is like heavily cinematic focused, um, that's where a lot of the benefits come in, right? Because we don't have to worry about like, oh, I have to... Um, do a high to low poly, I'll have to texture it in substance, I do have to do this. No, you can just scan something and just put it in the engine, take a button, and it will optimize it for you. That is freaking awesome. It's just, yeah, we you have to let like a whole virtual world run, and then also have it be optimized, and lit in real time, and it's an open world, and oh my god, yeah. The complexity of things, right? Like, especially in game formats, like, it goes... It spirals out of control really quick. 
doesn't mean that this won't be the standard in the future, right? Because technology is always evolving. So there's that angle to it as well. And I think it is going to be more and more embedded in the future. But at this current point, it's kind of hard to tell whenever that future is going to happen. Well, at least for me, right? I'm also looking at it from the outside now, right? So... For now, I only see those benefits. Yeah, and those benefits, Rory, they're like big, you know? Because let's, if we're really objective about it, like doing, doing a game art pipeline, especially like high to low poly, like it is such an archaic and honestly like burden on making games, right? Like there must be a better way of doing this. So if a company comes out with something where you can scan something or you can just make a high poly, figure out a work a workflow to texture it and high poly and then just chuck it in the engine without having to bake it and do all that kind of stuff, it would be awesome, right? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of interesting movements happening, but they're just... I feel like currently they're going very slow or I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe slow is not the right word, but like the iteration time of games, right? That's not a secret that it takes a long time to make games. So I guess that's why we're not seeing too much of it. Oh, um, I think another one of those examples is mid poly workflow, right? Mid poly workflow combined with second RGB, like second UV RGB channels, um, where you have a lot of control in the engine rather than having to go back to, oh, I have to go to substance, tweak it, oh, and then go back and forth between the engine and your editing program, right? I think that's where the, the game workflows are really heading towards. Because they still have that optimization built in, right? And like, especially with trim sheets where it becomes like really performant if you have a metal trim sheet that's doing the main components of like your world, right? That's like super optimized. Um, I think, yeah, we're, we're going to see that more and more, right? Like there's a couple of great examples. The Ascent was really good. I loved how... How... How few... Like how small their texture space was to basically make the entire game. Like that was awesome to see. Um, and then also, I think the latest Dead Space also has like a bunch of those workflows. Star Citizen does a great job. Um, Alien Isolation also had like the mid poly workflow. Doom, the latest Doom was a great example of that as well, where they they have like base geometry with titleables. And then they just add decals and all that stuff on top of it. I I think that's still like my favorite example to bring up. Let me let me have a look. Yeah, it's this stuff, right? Like you can really clearly see like the different the different iterations of like how they would layer up like an environment. make it look real nice at the moment i don't know if there's an official product that uses the new functions and tools of Unreal Engine 5 nanite lumen etc maybe plague tale 2 um i don't i don't think so I don't think so, because you have to look at the development time of the, that game, right? And I think the development time of that game, um, they probably started on it before Plague Tale came out. And I think they just use like their own proprietary thing to handle the lighting. I think, you know, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I feel like this sort of workflow is, is what we're going to see a lot more of in the future. Because it is it is ease of use, right? Like if you can if you can talk to your art director 
Or like if your art director comes up to you and says like, hey, look, um, I kind of want to change the visuals of this entire area. And imagine if that is like its own unique thing. Oh, it's going to take you so much time to get that looking good. Whereas if you can just do it in the engine and like tweak stuff on the fly, that's super handy. I can't tell if that's using deferred decals or if they made a an engine tool for mesh decals. I'm not sure about those specifics. I think uh go back, maybe it says in the description. Oh jeez. Well, you wanna have a video? Object here you go. You can you can check it out yourself. That probably goes a little bit into like if they're using deferred decals or mesh decals or not. Oh, these are end pieces, right? Oh no, they're not. Where are the end pieces then? Uh, can it be useful for fast and fast for those you use photogrammetry to make assets, perhaps? Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Like. You gotta, you gotta look at it this way as well, right? Like, Unreal Engine is not a game engine anymore. At least in my opinion, right? Like, they're, they're trying to be... Like, a visualization engine. Like, that can be applied to architectural visualization, games, movies, all that kind of stuff, right? Like, they're trying to make tech that kind of works for all those things, rather than only for games. Right? So they kind of have to straddle, like all those different aspects at once. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting though. Let's get this back into the engine. Let's have a look at some other stuff in the chat as well. I'm permanently stuck in creation engine optimization mode. Low poly is 1 to 100 triangles, mid poly 100 to 800. And nanite is out of the question. Yeah, but that's... I mean, I know I know where that is coming from, right? Because I was in that mode with Planet Coaster as well, where everything had to be like super low poly. You just have to be careful with that because that's gonna that can potentially hurt you in your chances of actually getting a job. Because right now, I mean, this is the opposite end of the spectrum, right? Like there's there's a bunch of people out there that make kick-ass work, and it's all about the visuals, all about the visuals. Looks nice, but then if you start looking at the geometry, it's like, oh yeah, there's a lot of optimization that still can be done. Blah blah blah. Um, I think I think that's also not a good approach. And I think with with your example, you're on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? Where where you're like so over optimized that the art kind of suffers because of it. And that's also not a good place to be in it. Especially current current gen art, right? If that's your goal. actually put something on here. Is that even big enough? Stockholm Syndrome is real. It is, but yeah, you'll get over it. 
For sure. Let's see, what can I put on there? Like a bag of coins. There we go. An untextured bag of coins. Let's see. It's, uh... Yeah, I don't think we're going to be putting too much on there, huh? Maybe like a small lid. Look. Oh, that's a uh, one with paint. Jay's also saying, I feel like the issue is that the new stuff is coming out, but there is not enough time devoted to just one of them, just to refine them enough for use. Wait, well, I feel like the issue is that new stuff is coming out, but there's not enough time devoted to just one of them. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, there's no refinement going on. But it's also, yeah. I mean, that's always been the case, right? Like, um, just different workflows coming out and everyone is going to have their own way of doing it. And then over time, like people will, will kind of gravitate towards doing, doing like more of the same thing or like learning from each other. I think honestly, like there's this weird thing. I don't know if this is correlated to it, right? I have no clue. But I've always found that like in recent years, talks about art on GDC or DEFCOM or whatever it may be are kind of lacking. So yeah, maybe, maybe that kind of hints to, to some, I don't know, to some minor stagnation when it comes to art, because I don't know, minor stagnation is probably like too big of a thing to say, but Yeah, I don't know. Some random thoughts that I had. Let's, um... I'm just gonna do some set dressing for now. So I kind of want to make this like a... A full... Pottery stand. So the person sits on that end. And so. I don't know, it just seems pointless right now when we're still going to decimate our meshes anyway. Oh, Matty, yeah, that's actually a thing, right? Like, with, with Nanite, you don't really need to decimate them anyway, right? Like, it takes care of, like, the optimization part for you. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, who knows? It's interesting, though. It is very inspiring to see how far uh, Epic Games is pushing it, though. Especially because they have Fortnite going on as, like, their test... Test, um, test baby, right? Where they can just, like, test all the workflows. I would say you should probably still decimate them purely because of streaming limits. All depends on how how on the context, right? Hi Tobias! How's it going? Let's have a look. Let's put like a bunch of plates on here. Oh, I wanted to grab a chair as well. <clears throat> Where is my... Pottery in here. Let me throw like a whole bunch of plates down. It's filled. Don't need that. I'm gonna grab a large pot. Maybe we can scatter some broken pottery in there. Oh. Ugh. Great, Tim. And you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Having some fun doing some set dressing. Man, these are some of the new songs that I added. I like them. They're gonna be like epic. Yeah. Um, I think we would also need to make let's see slap a clean version on there. They want to make some clay or something like that to go on on top of it. That would look nice. Oh, we've got a basket. Got about you guys. Bucket. Yeah, we definitely need a bucket with water next to the clay. Hi, Populous! How are you doing? I wanted to grab some bags to put behind this guy here. Kind of fill up the space a little bit. I like this variation. I really like where that is going. 
compared to just stuff that we had before. Feeling way better about it. Just need to make sure that this is a little bit nicer dressed up. Just adding some random variation. And we can we can also uh, I think let's make clean zero two. And what I'll do is I'll just change the color just a little bit. So we get like a little bit variation. Oh, this doesn't even use. Wait, what? What did I do here? Color overlay. Oh. Ooh. Looks weird. Oh my god, what is happening with the preview? It's so weird. <laughs> okay. Whatever. This is weird, the way that I set it up. Why did I do it this way? What? Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. What material are you using? Vertex color. Just plug that in here. Different plot. You go. And I think I made an instance by accident. That's not what I wanted to do. So now I'm gonna go in here. I need to sub just a little bit. Cool. That's all I want. Happy Friday! Hi, Jesse! Happy Friday! Yeah, Populous, I'm doing good. Thank you so much. Sorry, I, I forgot if I answered that already. <laughs> Going to the zone, making making my different pottery colors. Uh, Tobias is asking a quick question. I'm busy posting my latest environment with all the custom models on our station. Do I have to post every model in the breakdown as well? Or can I only post the ones I want to show? Only post the ones you want to show. You want your portfolio to be the best representations of your skills as possible. So keep that in mind. I would only post the stuff that is like really worth showing and like try to try to do as much of a breakdown as possible. If you want to get some additional tips, I've done I do a portfolio review like every month and there's like a whole bunch of tips that I've kind of gathered over the over the last couple of months, that might help you for your portfolio presentation as well. So, 
If you're wondering about portfolios, check check that out. Not the old one. I'm just adding like a slight offset here and there. You know what I should do? I should make these into stacks that are blueprints so that I can add those blueprints easier to like everything I want to add. Okay, so this would be a blueprint by itself. Or like a level instance. Do that or should we... Should we do that as like a static mesh instead? Probably gonna do it like this. One thing that I need to figure out is naming convention for this though, because right now they're all over the place and I don't like that. Do not like that. And also, none of them have preview, so that's also not great. Yeah, I need to, I need to sort that out. I wanted to say that's something that I'm doing after the stream, but yeah, we know by now that that's not going to happen. So let's not pretend. Maybe, maybe what we'll do instead of this guy over here we're gonna put this guy in I don't even want him to cast shadows I care about that thank you no worries happy to help That's nice. This one's nice as well. So we got like a bunch of pottery stuff. Really happy about. I think then this one would come in here as well. Just need to do a pass on this guy. I think that's you. So how does that all connect?
trying to think. I kind of have this one. This kind of has the same sort of mechanism as well. Just looks a tiny bit different. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe we should make a different one. Just don't know which one. Maybe maybe something like this, you know? Well, wait. It's not the same. Hiya, Route 1. How's it going? How... Is that just attached to the table then? Okay, I'm gonna, gonna do some more ref hunting. Evil market stall. Let's have a look. Keely higher. Let's have a look. Like maybe, maybe I skipped one of these. One's pretty cool as well. Apex roof period stall. No real indication of. Which period? Middle Eastern inspired. Yeah, kind of has that vibe to it. <laughs> I love all the... All the fake fish and all the fake food. <laughs> It's actually crazy what what movies and well and games to a certain extent as well like get get away with you know like faking all this stuff. I mean more movies, I guess. Let's uh do it by theme. Let's do people. Ceremonial post. Wine press. Looks cool. <clears throat> Those are all the market stalls. Stick cages. Oh, market stall. Tipping cauldron. It's awesome. The the picture of it is uh, terrible though. What do you have this guy? Put them in there. Mm. Oh, that's one with the trestles underneath again. Do you mind that? I think that's it. Let's keep looking.
Okay, I'm gonna see because I was really interested in this image. I'm gonna I'm gonna see more Roman stuff. This doesn't look promising, does it? This doesn't look promising. It's not. How much does this cost? asking not enough money for my stuff <laughs> that's the main conclusion i'm getting from when i whenever i look at that so nuts okay not finding anything good right so i might what i might do is stick with my original thought and go for like a triangular setup Something like this, with a triangular canopy, and then I'll see. I'll see if we can kind of make make an interesting frame for it ourselves. Or hmm, kind of have this guy now, right? So. I guess it doesn't hurt. Let's, let's just stick with this one. And I'm gonna be sneaky and steal like a whole bunch of stuff from here as well. It would be cool to have some of this fabric on here too. Just have to make sure that it looks a little bit different. Oh, you just got on the computer route? That's awesome. Did you just wake up then? Is that what's happening? Let's do something like that. delete this oh, well didn't really delete it and we kind of know that those bits are going to rest up on those little cross beams so that means that we can push some of the other stuff down Geo. Let's clean this up a little bit, huh?
do you have geometry? I just didn't see it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Why is all the spooding fucked? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. You do that though. Weird. Um Select sharp edges. There we go. Oh, there's some smoothing issues going on here as well. Need to make sure that this connects. Okay, while I'm in focus mode a little bit, let me ask you all a question. What are the plans for the weekend? Since it's a beautiful Friday, <clears throat> what is everyone else up to? Doing anything nice over the weekend? <gasps> Barbie! George is watching Barbie. I am so out of the loop with like any anything. Well, just anything movie related. Like obviously I've seen I've seen the posters. And I I can I can take a guess what it is about, right? But Yeah, I've I've never seen any trailers or haven't seen anything like that. I've seen I've seen the memes. Or like the comparisons between between Barbie and Oppenheimer, right? Because they're like the polar opposite. That's about it. It's about Barbie. Yeah, thanks, George. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're um are you are you volunteering to become my like I don't what, what even would that be? Like my movie suggester. <laughs> Jesse saying gotta see Barbie and Oppenheimer back to back, best viewing experience. Okay, so everyone is saying this, right? But like if you had the choice, would you go see Barbie first or last?
That's a question, right? Like, what basically, what do you want the rest of your day to look like? Because if you if you're gonna see Oppenheimer last, like I'm, I'm pretty sure that your day is gonna be not so great, right? <laughs> Probably first Barbie and then Oppenheimer. You want to end with a bomb? <laughs> I can't <laughs> end the day with a bomb. I don't know. Maybe I would do it the maybe I would do it the opposite way, right? Start really heavy and then end on like a light note. That's maybe how I would approach it. Um, okay, let's look at the structure for a little bit. We kind of fix the canopy, right? But. I guess that's the way that I would do it. Go and see Barbie first. And then... Uh, no. Well, I don't know. I gotta be honest. I If I had to choose between the two movies, I would watch Oppenheimer for sure. And Barbie is just like something that... Well, not even for sure, right? Because I've seen stuff about Oppenheimer and I'm like, cool, I'll watch that at some point right and i feel like in if it was like a, a 1 to 10 i would watch like my my intent to watch oppenheimer is about a four and barbie is around a two <laughs> that's where i'm at but also we're talking to a person who just sits behind his PC the entire day and doesn't really care about movies, you know? So keep that in mind. I can't... Talking about the movies, I can't even remember the last time when I went to the cinema, I think. Honestly, can't remember. Oh, man. I don't know if this was the last one. But we... Oh, I don't know why we did this. Like, we we went and watched Pacific Rim 2. Oh, my God. And that movie was so bad. I can't, I can't even... I don't even know if we walked out or not. No, I think I think we might have done. I can't even remember. Like it was such a bad movie. Ugh. Oh, George is gonna be my movie suggestion. Just just a favorite George biased one. All suggested movies are based on my taste. Okay, George, give me give me three movies that you would suggest to me right now. <laughs> Jesse is also asking me what my favorite movie is. Um, that's a tough one. I, I've always said... <laughs> George. <laughs> I've always said Pacific Rim 1. Like, Pacific Rim 1 is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. I just love it. Um, <sighs> second one? I don't know, you know? Like... I don't really have this, like... I don't really have this tie with movies for some reason. John Wick was good. The Matrix was good. But if if I have to say, like, my favorite movie? Probably have to be Pacific Rim. Yeah, I think so. And I, I feel like there's, like classics right like the lord of the rings like all of them are really good and i think we watched them like at least once in a couple of years you know i think last time we watched them was like during during new years we watched like all the movies like back to back which was awesome um yeah other than that I don't know. That's a tough one. I 
I think uh, also, George, did you just pull this meme of um, the guy pulling up in the car and being like, oh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite game? Like name 16 of your favorite games or something like that. And it's just like, oh, Final Fantasy. Like, oh, OK. <laughs> did you just pull that on me? I, uh, I do love watching series, though. We don't do it as often, right? Um, I think the the thing that we're watching right now is uh, True Detective. We're gonna we're gonna go through all the seasons. I think I've only seen like season one, and it's really good. I like it very much. Yeah, I think I think it's a little bit easier with series, you know. But I think, and I think my all-time. Okay, what's the what's what's your what's the chat's recommendation of like series to watch? Give me some suggestions. Do I even have all this? Can it? Just be simple. Nah. George is currently watching Modern Family. Okay, I'll take I'll take your suggestion into account, um, George, film suggester. <laughs> Might be biased, but Columbo holds up. I don't even know what that is. I think I have an inkling of what Modern Family is. I think I might have seen the cover of it. I have no idea what Columbo is. Um. So wait, does this does this make sense now? Like, how does this all connect? That goes behind that. House of the Dragon, have seen that, yes. It was really good. A bit like that. Wait, Henrik, can be a technical qualification as a media designer in four year experience with Blender as a hobby enough for a junior position? I am 18 years old. Um, all that stuff doesn't really matter if you don't have a good portfolio. Like, all those qualifications, like, they are additional to your portfolio. Like, your portfolio is king when it comes to getting into game art. No worries. Thank you for the question. Yeah, it's a uh, that one is actually surprisingly straightforward. Like, um, so to give you an example, 
I have I have a bachelor degree in oh god what's the official term um I've got a I've got a major in game graphics that's what that's what I majored in um but I'll tell you like I I joined my first company didn't even ask about my my degree I joined my second company they did ask me about my degree I was like yeah I got a bachelor they were like cool bachelor check didn't even need to see it I have never seen my own degree because by the by the time they send it to my my home well my parents home at that time I've already moved out to the UK so yeah and now I live and now I live in Germany so I don't think I've ever seen my own degree <laughs> it's kind of silly Yeah, just as an indication of like how few of the actual technical qualifications matter. Like it's mainly um, it's mainly just your portfolio. And then um, there is an aspect where if you if you come from outside of like the region or outside of the continent. So let's say let's say you're applying to like. Um, like I'm currently living in, in Berlin, right? So let's say I apply to an American studio. That's where it does become important to have a bachelor degree or something equivalent to that. Because that's gonna open a lot more doors than if you don't have a bachelor's degree. But that's that's the main thing. I think the last thing we need to do on all of this, by the way, is just making it. Um, do want to add some decals on top of this, but that will be like a polish kind of thing. So yeah, I've got a, I've got a degree somewhere. Where can I submit my portfolio for your critique? Uh, so I'll send you the link for that. But the next one is only going to happen next month. And I can't guarantee you that you're going to get in. Because I do do people from the community first. I think... Um, I think we might have plots currently, but I'm not sure. Oh, I need to I need to take like a proper look at this list by the way. No, don't open Da Vinci. Oh, why did I do that? Um, this is what I needed. Oh, way. It's the link that I wanted to send. If you wanna, if you wanna speed that up, and if you wanna kind of skip the queue, right? Like, um, I suggest that you become like a member of our community. And you can do that by looking at the link in the description. I think. I think I added it there. How to become a member. So, those things added to it already? I don't think so.
Donc. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna do the same thing on this guy. Am I transform? Cool, still has the settings from last time. Thanks, no worries. No worries at all. Let's edit. Let's do this. Alright, so we're getting some details on there. That's looking nice. Yeah, natural barking at I don't know what in the background. He's in a very barky mood today. Hi, Roy. How are you doing? Um. Does that even make sense? We have it here already. Don't want to do. Don't want to do it the same way. I think it might be cool to maybe do like a little corner kind of thing. Going through my list of changes from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Oh, your submission, you mean? Yeah. How was that going? Oh, it's all red. Okay. <laughs> it's not that great then. What's the what's the thing that you're uh, running into currently? Oh, three reds is not that bad. Not bad at all. Wait, I need... Need some crane. Apparently my made-up brand is close to a real brand. Yup. Gotta check that. Yeah, that's one of the... One of the hidden factors of game development that... Like, a legal team is not only to, like, like Nintendo, sue the shit out of people that, like, try to, try to claim some of your content, but also just to verify if, like, your names are not close to brand names or something like that. Interesting. Can you give an example? Like, how, how close was it actually to, to the real brand? If you don't mind sharing that, of course. You know what annoys me? The amount of AI copyright crap on the marketplace. Bit ironic. Yep. It's always going to be that way. 
Don't don't look at it. Hi, AC Maraps. And the guy researching said it exists. Gotta... Gotta be careful with it, you know? I mean... It, it is called Blaze Media, though. Like, it's it, it comes up, like, in the first Google search, right? So... <laughs> Oh, don't even look the same? Doesn't matter. Like, that doesn't matter. I think the the thing that you need to be aware of is that if it is the same name and it's within the same uh, niche, right? So, like, let's say news, um, then you're kind of then you're kind of screwed. Like, then you need to change it up. If it is the same name, but it's like a completely different category, let's say Blaze Agriculture, right? Then, then you should be fine. Like Blender the Mixer. <laughs> yes, exactly. How are you doing, AC Maraps? Good to see you here. But yeah, you you have to be careful of that. Like that that can really, really screw you up and like your work up. So it's a good lesson, honestly. Really good lesson. Don't want to, want to overdo it. Let's see. Baskets, maybe. We got to do more research on every project now. Yep. Um, in the other project that we're currently making, we're kind of going through that now. Is like, okay, if we make a brand, like we do extensive research on like if the name is already being used or not, if the logo looks a little bit, like if it looks the same or anything like that, right? Like you have to be really, really careful with that. Yeah, there's a... There's a lot that goes in with it. That's also that's also why the bigger companies they they just call their brand their fake brand like the name of their actual company, right? Instead of trying to come up with like a bunch of brands for like a bunch of generic stuff, because you have to do that check for like every different brand that you do, and it just becomes like such a hassle. You know, if you wanna if you wanna have like I don't know, let's say let's say you're making a scene, and then. Uh, you have to do one for, let's say, a brand for transportation. Let's say a brand for, like, detergents. Let's say a brand for cardboard boxes. Like, all that kind of stuff. You know, like, so much time and research goes into it. Or you might as well just use, like, one name that you've ideally already copyrighted and is yours, right? But that... That kind of loses like the purpose of it a little bit as well, right? So it's like a give and take. Because ideally you want to have like in-world brands that are kind of like fake, right? And have like enough of them to convince people that that is like a real, that those are real brands in that world that you're making. Yeah, definitely give and take. As to the world building, yeah. Save them now. Cool. 
and that's probably also updated in my scene as well. Yeah, there we go. Music is popping off, hell yeah! Is Da Vinci free? Yes, Da Vinci is free. Well, it has a free version. Let's say that. Uh, this had a... Let's not add that here, right? Let's keep it to the bigger stall. I think he died ages ago. Oh god. Oh god. Don't start with those jokes. Um So He said Da Vinci. Da Vinci. Oh, Roy, you also forgot a bunch of collisions on my blueprint meshes. Schoolboy errors. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that those... Those things get caught. Right? I mean... Let's be honest. Like, it's not a person doing it, right? They probably have, like, automated systems for that. You can't imagine that they do that by hand. Must have automated system. It might. You sure? Yeah. Like the amount of complex testing systems that games company uses, like internally. Um. They must have automated system. They seem to take a long, a long time. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have a system for that, right? I think what they do is that they have a system that goes through them, but they, um, there's probably like a backlog, right? And they screenshot stuff for me. Yeah, uh, a tool can do that too. Tool can easily do that too. That's the cool thing about tech. Like some of some of the tests, right? Like where Yeah, overwhelming otherwise. I mean it, it's probably like a bit of both, right? Like that's probably like the reality of it. Oh <laughs> my that's probably the reality of it, right? Where they have an automate, an automated tool. And then if that automated tool comes up with a bunch of issues, they go in and verify it, right? But they, there's like probably like a bunch of shortcuts, right? Um, so we have this blueprint. We have a blueprint here. I do want to... Man, this blueprint stuff. Me too. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with something something new here. So market stalls. Nowadays, there's also an AI which can test the success of films. Saw it on YouTube. What do you mean the success of films?
like how the audience is going to appreciate the the film is that what you're talking about or if there was anything wrong in like the editing and like flaws and flaws in the production of the movie so i'm gonna i'm gonna start moving likes of the film yeah but that's i think i don't think that's too difficult to do you know like i don't think an audience these days is relatively complex you know like i mean there's there's a thousand like marvel movies out there right i don't know like i, I don't think that's like particularly interesting might be wrong No, not really. Just another TikTok. Yeah, I'm I'm out of the loop on TikTok, and I just deleted all my social media phone like from apps from my phone. So I'm taking the opposite direction. <laughs> okay, create level instance. Let's go. Now, how do we name this? Because I was thinking BPP, like, but that's not level instance, doesn't really have a nice ring to it either. Truth of it is, I'm probably going to rename like a bunch of these anyway in the end. That's probably going to be the truth of it. It's in here. Okay, just looking good. Let's do probably gonna be large. And then this is gonna be medium. Maybe these two are medium, that one is large. Yeah, here we go. The fun begins. Um, when I do level instance, it doesn't show my collision mesh. Yeah, I think I think that's because it's literally a different level, right? Here we go. Fun begin. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so this was already named medium. Okay. What was the issue then? This is stuff in... Stuff in the level then. Zoom in. Rename, rename temp. Small pottery zero one already. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? 
he named them. Uh oh. Okay, just gonna risk it, I guess. Thanks. Okay, let's call this large that already exists. Yeah, but that's the one that I'm freaking mess. Already exists. Where? Show me. It's not here though. Market stalls? Oh. Thirty nine references, but that doesn't have anything in it, right? Yeah. Okay, so um fix up redirectors. How are you grouping them in individual levels? So that's a thing called level instances. Which is like a new system that got introduced with Unreal Engine 5, which is pretty neat. What trying to do here. Oh, choose files to save. I don't need all this shit. Is that also keeps breaking? Super handy. It's like nesting objects. Yeah, exactly. That is still large pottery, but it says medium. Okay. Hmm? Let's give that another try. It doesn't matter which one I have selected because it's going to do center minimal Z anyway. Oh, I still need to delete it first. Yes, okay. Now we're good. I usually use blueprints for grouping or sublevels. Yeah, but if you want to do adjustments in blueprints... Oh! That's nice. Oh, no, it moved it all the way over there for some reason. If you use blueprints and you want to do adjustments uh, after the fact, especially if you deal with, like, I don't know, let's say houses, it's, it just becomes unworkable to try to do adjustments in the blueprint. Like, it's annoying. Where this system kind of gets rid of that and it works really fluently. Like, it's really nice. Sublevels work, but that's that's like a different kind of system, right? So, center minus C, apply that. What? Now the other one's gone. What? Wait, hold up. Are they are they like linked into each other? No, right? Open actor. Oh fuck. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for swearing. Ah, <laughs> oh, I hate this. Like all the RVD stuff. Oh, I'm gonna delete it. I just. I can add it later. RVT is broken anyway in this level, so screw it. Screw it.
What is this window? Oh, yeah. That landscape all set. Hello? Oh, yeah. I see. Because it took, like, the minimal Z position. It's fixed. This stuff it works, so that one it works as well. These two are the same now, which is totally not what I wanted. Um, so yeah. I didn't even notice that until now. Oh, the pain. Oh my god. And that's just purely because I named one of them wrong, I think. There's two of them now? What? 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 There's three of them. What? <laughs> so confused. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to rebuild the big one then. Right side of that is, is that... You have the level instance set up for it? Yes. Okay. That's honestly the only bright side that I can see. Uh, Marcus Saul. Cool. So. Oh, God. Such a pain sometimes. Unreal. Why do you do this? But it's also an opportunity to make it better. Right? So what I did have. Uh, maybe, maybe add a baron in there as well. And I'm just going to. stuff over here in the back In the epic music section again. No, I don't want this. Go for some chill vibes then. I'm gonna add that in these collections. Where's my pottery wheel? So that's gonna help me a lot. I love that you're angry in my name, Roy. I appreciate it. Slap a stool in there. Feel the pain. <laughs> How do you set up your di directory for folders like textures, materials, and assets? Um, this is how I'm doing it. 
Like, it's a little bit chaotic right now. But I have assets and then I'm trying to, like, separate them out into, like, logical sections. But I do need to clean this up, though. So I think architecture, foliage, food, that makes sense. Modular pieces and unique pieces don't really make sense anymore. Um, because there's just too much here, right? So I would have to break them up into like smaller sections, I think. Then like materials. Materials looks better. Got placeholders, got test. Mass materials. It's the way that I'm setting them up. But there's no there's no one way that that works, right? Like the most important thing is that it's sort of logical and it's consistent. Was like the main things to follow there. Unless you're submitting for the Unreal Engine marketplace, then you need to <coughs> Yeah, like Roy is saying, uh it needs to have a certain structure or they tell you off. Yep, 100%. Did I add here? I did have some some bags, right? Like behind it. I think. Do you have an ETA for this? No. Um, because it heavily depends on how how much time I can put into it. Um, because I'm also working on another project and then I'm, I'm running all the Beyond Extend stuff too, right? I'm looking into making tutorials, uh, doing, doing a lot of editing and all that stuff. Say in an ideal world. I want like a timeline, maybe end of the year, maybe. Something like that. I don't know. Because I, I only... I, I've not even defined like what the goal for this will be. Right? So I don't even know what I'm working towards. Like I'm really just going with like... Hey, I like working on this. I feel like I'm getting to like a good spot with like all my assets. But I have no idea where I want to stop with this. No clue. This is, this is the definition... Uh, this is the definition for like a passion project, right? Like, I don't care about a deadline. I don't care like how long it takes me. I'm working on this because I'm having so much fun on doing it. So that's why I haven't really defined any of that for this project. Did you ever consider stuff um, like, did you ever consider outsourcing some stuff like video editing no not currently i feel i feel like for that you well at least to me i need to have a grip on that first before i then ask someone else to do it that's uh opposed to you needing you needing to make some money yeah i mean like the main benefit is this right like this stream like, that's my way of kind of monetizing it, I guess. But I don't think... I, I think I turn monetization off for this stream. It's just... Yeah, it's not it's not the purpose. It's also not worth it currently, so... I don't know. It's like a whole experiment, right? Why do you ask, Populous? That's, uh, that's an interesting question. I don't feel like I'm liking this like the previous iteration though. I feel like the last one was looking better, even though I have no no way to verify that. I 
Maybe just because the foreground here is a little bit too empty. Oh yeah, we did have some tubs, right? Oh, no, like a... Okay. I always wanted to hop into YouTube and stuff, but every time I did video editing, it just completely and utterly despised it. <laughs> I actually kind of like it. Like, to me, to me, it's like... I find it weird, right? I've been I've been saying this to like some people that I find it really interesting that there's like correlations between the stuff that I do in like telling a story in like a scene like this and then telling a story in a YouTube video. And also maybe outsourcing could help you focus on some of the other stuff for the whole group since it's great. Yeah, you know, that is true. That is very true. And I think I think that is the stage that I want to get to. You know, like that's that's the stage that I do want to get to. Um, it's just not not now. Like I still feel strongly. Uh, I still feel strongly that I need to get to grips with the editing first before I can tell anyone else to to kind of to kind of do the editing for us, right? Because if you don't have an idea on how to edit, like how to tell a story, it would be kind of hard for me to tell anyone else to do it. At least that's my opinion on it. We just need a podcast now. Oh God, the podcast topic again. We had one. We did one for like a year and a half or something like that. And then we realized that it just was a lot more work than we anticipated. So we kind of stopped doing it. We definitely did have one. But the thing with the podcast is... Um, You would need a good co-host. And if you don't have a good co-host, then it would be all about like inviting interesting people to come on, right? But I don't want to deal with that. Oh, you'll do it round one? If I come back to talk about stuff? Mm, no, thanks. I don't really have an interest in bringing the podcast back. Uh, not at this point. And yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, it needs... Like, there was something... There was something about, like, me and Will talking about, about things that just lend itself really well to a podcast. Um, and that's not something that you can achieve with, like, anyone, I feel. Yeah, I, I do have a backlog of like all the topics that we still wanted to talk about and might be interesting to talk about in the future. So there is definitely a database of like stuff that we can talk about there. Yeah, honestly, Populous, like the, the point that you brought up of like outsourcing and letting other people take charge or like do do the editing. That's something that I've really struggled with, with, um, with Beyond Extent. And I'm getting better at. Like now the workshops are in good hands uh, with Karim taking over the workshops. We still, I mean, it's a little bit difficult, right? Because it was like a little bit of a dip that we had. Um, but yeah, like I feel like I feel like I'm getting better at it too. It's probably like the most difficult thing that I had to do with Beyond Extend, honestly. What um, Populous, talking about the stuff that you want to do, like, what made you want to jump into YouTube?
That's amazing. The more optimization, the more benefit we get from it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm working towards. I've done I've done a whole bunch of backend stuff that's like invisible, but it's like really important for the company, so. So many factors to this whole thing. What are we gonna add here? Um maybe maybe some more pottery in the foreground. Just fill it up a little bit. We have this more in the foreground. Always wanted the YouTube channel as a kid, even for gaming and stuff, but now I just found it as a way I could teach other people and earn some money in return, maybe. Oh, so you did have a YouTube channel. I mean, I'm assuming that channel that you're speaking with now probably has some videos attached to it then, right? That's cool though. Yep. So we're just forcing stuff out. Yep, that's... I... You know when you're doing that, then you're doing something wrong. And that's also why I didn't want to continue doing the podcast, right? Because if one of us just felt like we were kind of forcing stuff out, just for the sake of it, it meant that the foundation of the podcast wasn't really in good shoes. Like, we had a lot of fun, but whenever we tried to make it into something more serious... Or like a dedicated topic, like it kind of, kind of missed a point a little bit for us. But that—that's where it gets tricky, right? Like because I define the podcast as like, hey, I wanna, I wanna be able to talk about like industry topics and like teach people, right? And if you're not aligned with the other person on that, then you're gonna separate at some point right? because you're not making. You're not making podcasts towards the same goal. So yeah, it's really important to have a, like a partner that you align with. And this is also not like, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of throwing, throwing Will under the bus a little bit. That's not my intent, right? I'm just saying that we didn't have like a lot of the important conversations that you'd need to have in the beginning. It more started as like, hey, we we love having this conversation. Let's just record it and put it online. That's kind of how it started. But yeah, that kind of that kind of missed like a whole bunch of the foundational elements you would need. But yeah. I, I understand forcing stuff. That's also what uh, what happened to me when I was doing the weekly tips, right? Like after a certain point, it's just, I've written like over 250, um, 250 weekly tips, right? Um, that's a lot, like over time. And after a point, it's just like, yeah, how much more am I going to write? You know? I don't know. I mean, I would say there was still some quality stuff. Yeah, I, I think we also stopped doing it. There were some there were some podcasts in both me and Will agree on this, right? Where we talked about the PlayStation Showcase, for example. We didn't watch it. Like, we had no idea about the PlayStation Showcase before. Um, I just watched it for like half an hour before the podcast. And then we went live and talked about it. That was, that was a stupid episode. Like, that shouldn't have been an episode, in my opinion. And I think Will would agree with that. Like, we were just unprepared. Um, so in that case, it comes back to your point, right? Like, if you, if we wanted to do something like that, it would be nice to have two people 
like two two good co-hosts, right? Because it is interesting to riff off of each other, and then also have a producer that kind of looks at some things, uh, comes up with interesting topics, and then does a deep dive like together with us on on like more topics. That would be awesome. Okay. Two co-hosts that roast each other for for an hour. <laughs> well, that's kind of what we did when we looked at each other's old portfolio. <laughs> what is this? What the f man? I'm done. Why does this one change when I change this one? What? This makes no fucking sense. Now I lost the other one. Oh. Two co-hosts that roast each other for an hour feel like it would be make make for good content, writing this down. Um Yeah, but then how do you scale that, right? Like you would it can't be the same co two co-hosts in that case, because that's gonna get boring really quick. Right? And that's also a thing that you need to consider with, with doing that, right? Like Oh man. Real shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah, definitely feels like it. Oh, you roast other people? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You just want to be like a drama YouTuber. I see where you're going. That's uh, That seems to be the current meta. Better jump onto that train real quick. <laughs> oh. Fuck, this hurts. Um... <sighs> okay, so that's the large one, right? That's the medium one, but it's just the large one. Like, what's happening here? Why is that doing it? Hashtag clickbait. Oh my god, no. Please, no. Wait, so I can't... I can change it to this one. I cannot change it to large because that links back to medium. So something, something got screwed up in like the redirectors. Okay, so... Which one do I need to remove then? I guess either or? You can't believe what Tim said about AI in this episode. Oh my god. Yeah, but that's that's also just a trend, right? Like the whole AI thing. Ugh. This is the thing that I would oh, kind of kind of hate to do, but it's kind of like the thing that you would need to do, right? If you're running a podcast, is like kind of stay on trends a little bit. Oh my god, yeah. Some stuff I just can't deal with that. Okay, so. Okay, let's try this again. But this one is a medium one right now. So I'm going to break this one. Probably talk about the industry news. Yeah, but that's boring. You know, like so many other people are doing that. Like, and the, and the thing the thing that we struggle with on the podcast, right, is that there's a lot of stuff that you want to say, but you can't say because it, it gets into the territory of NDA stuff, right? 
Um, so it's either like speculation or NDA that you're kind of like struggling between. And that's something that we really found was like really missing where <laughs> we we were joking about this. I think it was me and some other people from, from Beyond Extent where we were talking about like what would be awesome is that if you have like the... <laughs> Please don't do this, right? But like an NDA breaking podcast where people would wear masks and like become like totally unrecognizable and then talk about like all the NDA shit that they had to endure. <laughs> that would have been so fun. I would listen to that. But obviously, yeah, can't that can't do that for obvious reasons, right? Try that again. Nah, it still links back to the medium one. Okay. No, no, no. Back out of this one. Bye bye. Um. Let's try that again. Let's rename it just a little bit differently. Hey, Aladdin! How is it going? So, instead of large, we're just gonna do large. There we go, it's linked to its own thing now, that's good. And now... I can hopefully do, let's delete that. Okay, now they're disconnected from each other. Okay. Okay. Maybe those AI characters Twitch streamers use are more safe. Yeah, like like the VTuber stuff, right? Um It it doesn't really change, right? Because there's there's things that you can get out of the context of those conversations which will point directly to your company. Or like your previous company. Right? So that would be would be so interesting to do right because I'll, I'll tell you right now like there were uh podcasts that we did and after because we already we always did like we, we talked a bit after the podcast as well right so after the podcast we would sit down and we were like oh man you know at that point what would be awesome was to talk about this and we would both be like oh, yeah but we can't and that was just so annoying and then we did our first guest episode as well with Paul Worcester. And that just opened up like a new aspect of like what we needed to keep into account because now it was not only us asking the questions, but it was also just like um, Paul on the opposite side, like trying to evade NDA from his side as well. So we had to do some edits and it was just... Even though, like, some of it wasn't, like, necessarily NDA in our opinion, like, we shouldn't be making that decision for someone else, right? Like, yeah, it's such a tricky topic because you never know what a company is going to consider as NDA, right? Like, you, you just don't want to take any risk. That's what it comes down to. Oh, let's make... Let's make this thing again, shall we? Okay. Hopefully this is the last time though. VTuber Tim when? Um, I should have made that decision in the beginning. It's kind of too late for that now. Because now I don't get to benefit from any of it, right? I can't do like a big face reveal or anything like that. My face is already out there. It's too late for that. Aladdin is working on Gaia. How far are you in your medieval scene? Um, yeah. Far? Midway through? I don't know. It's hard to tell when you don't have a destination. <laughs> mm. 
Um, a couple of these plates already. Ship date when? I said some, something, something around like the end of the year, something. You also have to understand that this is not my priority at the moment, right? Like, this is my fun, fun baby that I'm working on, like on the side. I said this last year, Tim, and I might say that next year. Who knows? Well, I started to disappoint, but I'm not going to give you any deadline. I'm just going to keep working on it until I don't want to do it. And that's when I'll stop. <laughs> I'll tell you we're not there yet. Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you, Zora. Can I have it now? No. No. We'll have to wait until it releases. The main thing that is sure is that I'm going to finish it. Like, that's definitely on the table. When? No clue. But I definitely will. Because <laughs> I'm done playing around with, like, dead projects. Screw that. It's good to see that that one is still intact, Jesus. Okay, who here in the chat knows exactly when they're going to finish their project? If you're asking me the question, I might as well bounce it back, right? <clears throat> Two weeks? Nah, Rush, you don't work. You're automatically disqualified. <laughs> I never hit the deadline that I set for myself. Uh, but it averaged out for a few months, two to three months each one. And then Route 1 is saying hopefully in a week or two. Yeah. But it's interesting, right? Because I feel I feel like we're kind of the same on that front, Route 1. So I've, I've heard that a couple of times.
Work now on something for from one year ago called it finished. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Congratulations on finishing. Hi, Ruth. I'm just uh, starting to learn environment art. Any course you can recommend? Um, so there is a course that's doing the rounds from Tiago Klafke, which is really good. Um, there's also a bunch of CGMA courses that are really good as well that I've had that I know a lot of people went through. So check that out too. I think Modular Environment with Clinton Crumpler is a good one when you're looking for CGMA courses. Those are like the, the two ones where I've seen people make art and are from like reputable artists. So can definitely recommend those. Two to three months, man. I don't miss those long deadlines. <laughs> man, you're talking about long deadlines while you're working on a game for like five years. What are you talking about? <laughs> five years or more on average. Come on. Can't say that. That's where the real longevity comes in, like making an actual game. I gotta be honest, like that shit, like even... Even though, like, working on this environment feels long, right? Like, working on something for, like, years, eight hours a day. Man. Yeah. I... <laughs> the end result is nice, right? But, like, going through the actual work of it... <sighs> it's tiring, man. Tiring. At least in my opinion, right? That's what I felt. Not a personal project, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> right. If you're if you're doing a personal project that lasts five years, maybe maybe not the best choice of your time, right? Um. And as I say that, I'm reflecting on my own life. So, yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, it's only two. Let's not start. It's only two years. Come on. Now, I think I think the main thing there is, at least for me, it's the amount of time that you spend on it, right? Um, <laughs> yes, you're right. Two so far. We'll, we'll see where we end up. But I think if I were to work on this for like eight hours a day, like weeks on end, right? Um, first, I would have not been here, right? Like, um, like I would not be here in the sense that I would still be working on he on this. Um, yeah, second, like I would, I would not enjoy it as much, you know. Like I. I kind of like jumping in between projects now. I mean, multiple things going on. And like, especially because Beyond Extend is such a multifaceted thing, right? Like, it's kind of nice to have art and then also business and then also organization and all those kind of factors like happening at the same time. Kind of goes into like the jack of all trades conversation, right? But <sighs> to a certain degree, I don't care. No, it's my life. I get to decide who I want to live it, you know? Screw it. Make the most of it. Would you make a game? Nah, I don't think so. Maybe at a certain point, but definitely not on the plan now. I think if I had to choose one thing that I would devote like a bunch of time on is to make worlds. Kind of like I'm doing to a certain degree right now, right? Like this is stuff that I enjoy. So if someone comes in and says like, hey, I'm, I'm a programmer, I'm assembling a team 
and we're starting on something new and you get to decide the world but we're thinking about something like this that really aligns with what i'm doing that's maybe when i'll make a game maybe but they shouldn't expect me to do that full time especially at this stage And the idea and the pitch better be good. Because if it doesn't 100% align with what I want to make, I'm out. Um, what else can we put on here though? I hope that helps, uh, Ruth, and thank you so much for the question as well. Just make alcoholic bottles over and over again. That's a bit disgusting. What? What was that in reference to? Or is that your personal project that you're doing? work project oh okay i see yeah i'm kind of kind of glad that i didn't really jump into like advertising or anything like that because that's that's what i did before i jumped into university for game art I was uh, just making advertisements, flyers, and posters, and photography, and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm glad I didn't go into that more. It did give me a really good understanding of a lot of the art fundamentals, though. So I'm happy about that. I think you wanted to make a game, right? Route 1? At a certain point? Oh, Maddie, you were aiming for mid-September for mine, but I know I will probably end up working on it longer. Yeah, it's... Putting a timeline on a creative endeavor is really tricky. It's very difficult. Need more money first. Makes sense. Gotta be able to survive. I agree, but I, I find that timelines help you guide towards finishing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100% populous. Like, an artist without restrictions is never going to finish anything. Right? Like, I know that I, I have... Even though I say that I don't have a deadline, right? I know that there's going to be like an end to this project at a certain point. Um, but if you just have like a blank page, you know, and you don't have any restrictions, like creativity is usually born out of restrictions, right? Like um, this, this is something I've been reading Steal Like an Artist Again, which is a great book. And that's that's where that comes from as well. But yeah, recommend reading that book because it, that's the thing, right? Like 
we've all had this like blank page syndrome, you know, like when you don't know what to do. And um yeah, it's not really conducive to creativity, right? Like creativity comes out of restrictions where you look for references, where you look for like a thematic that interests you. And then you're like, oh, that's cool. But when you really think about it, that idea is already putting restrictions of what you don't want to do. So yeah, restrictions can be really helpful. And especially when you're working towards like making your own uh, portfolio, right? If you're looking for a job in the industry. Oh, I'm no longer in level instance. That's where, where deadlines can be really helpful. Because you can you can look at that as a goal and then be like, cool, I have I give myself like a year. What can I achieve in that year to give me the maximum amount of impact on making a portfolio or like getting a job in the industry, right? And then it kind of it kind of forces you to a certain degree to look at what the skills are that you think are missing and then make projects that kind of like align with those skills or stuff that you want to show off, right? Community challenges are also really helpful for this. Yeah, 100%. Just give you give you like a pitch, you know? Like oh, do something around this topic. Like it gets it gets the creative juices flowing, right? Even if like if you look at the latest team challenge for example, right? Like the thematic um the thematic was fallen giant, right? Like, everyone has their own sort of interpretation of that theme. But just having that theme there already gives you, like, boundaries to work with. Community challenges are amazing. I was really bummed out I didn't get into this team one. But I'm definitely signing up for the next one. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Keep doing that. I know... So the, the way that we kind of approach our team challenges, right, is that we're kind of looking for um, a certain skill set, right? Or like a, a certain a certain level of skills at that point so that we can kind of, to a certain degree, like level the playing field between the individuals within a team, right, as much as we can and make like a cool portfolio piece. Whereas like the solo challenges compared to that, like they're just like, hey, look, here's a cool theme. Go crazy. Even though we're not doing one this month, but. Um, what am I going to do with the back of this? Maybe. Another stool, maybe like another chest. What are we gonna what are we gonna pick? A basic one? It's a chunky boy. Do we have like a Less chunky boy. That one is ugly though.
Cool. Let's actually implement some of this. Where's my town? looking for I'm just randomly clicking uh blueprints rocket stalls second that notion creating R for contest has been super fun you learn a lot and time really flies also hi Tim hi Brandoom good to see you here glad you're also enjoying the challenges too This. Oh, I need to fix the pivot on this guy. No. Uh, go in here, apply. I think this one might be a little bit floating. Yeah. Need to adjust that. I mean, at this point, like, it's going to be all pottery shops, right? But I don't care that much. We can easily replace them afterwards. Just want to see if we can get like a nice variation. A nice variation in terms of shapes. small one again so many things are being added to this world will become an MMO oh my god no no, the MMO. The MMO curse. Because that's like typically what um what people want to make as their first game, right? It's like, oh, we're going to make an MMO. Maybe, maybe I'm being cursed as well. I got some floating herbs here. Let's just ignore that. In there. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what? Really? Did you start making an MMO? I want to hear about this. Brandoom is good to be back. Took a little break after my last gig project. Back into creating and job searching we go. Good luck, Brandoom. Good luck. I do have to say, I like where this is going. Like the materials are a little bit too dirty sometimes, right? So we can easily switch that up. But I like the density that we're getting. Also like the size variation too. Yep. Happy with that. Happy where that is going. Yes, sir. They actually are. So, these smaller pebbles, that's all Geo. G 
give everything physics and collision. Oh! Which I don't do you use to import from from Blender into Unreal. I'm using Unreal Engine, um, Blender for Unreal Engine. That's the name of it. Oh shit! I thought there was a chair next to it. It's an add-on for that. Yeah, like. This little thing that I keep pushing constantly, like export for Unreal Engine, is basically just this, right? So I've set this up before where I export it to like a certain a certain folder and then I can just re-import it in the engine and then it updates. That's it. No manual browsing, just one click export, done. I'll, uh, I'll share it again here yeah this is absolutely one of the add-ons that i would recommend if you're doing like bigger scenes and you need like especially with modular kits right Oh my god, so much time saving. Thank you so much. No worries. Keep asking those questions if you ever wonder, like, hey, how are you doing this? Just ask. I'm uh I'm happy to share. I would always export FBX, then re-import for so many assets. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm gonna save you... If you scale this over your lifetime, I'm gonna save you years with that link. So, you're welcome. a little bit of a trim here i mean look if you want like a, a live demo we're gonna adjust this little trim over here just gonna move that up a little bit cool then i just press unreal engine export for unreal engine right it's gonna do that done then i just go to this guy I mean, it is a level instance, so I have to go to the market itself, re-import, and it's done. That's it. Quick fix. And then, yeah, you can also do this, like, especially if you're working with this amount of assets, right? Let's say if I done like an update to all of these, I can just press that same button and it will do that for like all of them. And you can even set it. I, I haven't done that in this one, but like you could have it set to right now. It goes to like one folder, but you could also set it to go into like subfolders as well. So you could automatically like set it to go to into different folders and that is based on per asset basis so if i change that on this one it's going to be different from this one so you can just have it go into like whatever folder you want it to go immediately without having to do any like manual exports at all super handy
Nope. They don't have to be with this add-on. Like this add-on also moves it to like zero 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 space. Like th this is where the pivot is, right? I think even if you were to, um, I think if you take this apply transform. Wait, no. Um, isn't there like a way where you can do that? No, I don't think so. It's not baked in. But like, yeah, that's what a batch exporter does for you as well. So I don't have to worry about like moving it here and then exporting it. Nope. Don't wanna don't wanna let that take any time. Just let a let an add-on do that for you. So I've actually got a good tip when it comes to this stuff, right? If you ever wonder, like, there must be an easier way to do this. If you ever wonder that, like, look it up. Because it's highly likely that there might be a tool exactly for that. Um, and you're gonna be you're gonna be asking that question a lot, like, why why is it so hard? Like, there must be a way that I can make this easier. You're going to ask that question yourself a lot, so do a quick Google search. You might be surprised what comes up. You're changing my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I've been there too. I know what a, what a hassle it is. Okay, so we've got like a collection of these pottery guys now. Which is quite nice, even though we struggled so much with like, ugh, I don't even want to talk about it. Got a good collection now. And now what we can do is make like different collections for, for all this. I was thinking of saving money for like Zen UV and Pack Master 3. Would you reckon they are worth it though? I think Pac Master 3 has a free version, no? I think it has a free version. I think someone someone was saying that to me. Um I mean Zen UV is nice. I do use it myself. It just depends on what you use it for, right? Like Because the individual components can usually be found like separately and for free. So Oh yeah yeah. I couldn't just I just couldn't get it to install. Yeah, it is it is quite interesting how you need to install it. Um because you need to actually download two files and install them in very specific locations so that they that they pick each other up. Like it's quite specific in the way that you have to set it up. Um but yeah, I mean, I like Zen UV, but like the tools that I use the most out of it, um, is like the Quadrify. Let's see. What do I use out of this? Yeah, like a lot of this stuff. Quadrify Island, I like that. World Orient, I like that. Randomize, that's good. I do use the trim sheet sometimes and that's honestly like the main thing why i bought it myself um but yeah like that's the reason that's the reason why i bought this right um because world orient i mean it, it's a nice thing but it's like an optional thing randomize and quadrify you can get in free tools i think there's there's other there's other tools that i used before like uv toolkit is one of them that also has a quadrify island and i think a randomize in it as well um so just browse around 
look at what you need and find a specific tool that that has that because i would recommend not to just buy a tool because it is like a tool that people recommend right a lot of people for example i give an example of my personal thing right is a lot of people recommend box cutter and like machine tools and i bought them I used them once and I was like, yeah, this is not for me. And I've never used them since. Just not a thing that I need in my tool set, right? So it's a very specific thing. Okay. So. Roy saying, I love quadrify and pack and rotating bits. Yeah. Pack. Yeah. I mean, this is also the thing, right? Like, I don't make a lot of unique assets. So, packing to me is not really that useful. Um, yeah. So, again, it's like very personal, this stuff, right? So that's, that's why I'm saying, um, look at what you need and look for specific add-ons for that. That would be my recommendation. But I mean, yeah, I, I have Packmaster as well. And when I do unique stuff, like that's, that's such a nice time saver, right? Because Blender has a packing algorithm from itself, but it's not, it's not great. I think for stylized, you can't really get away with using other people's assets. Oh, what do you mean? Um, I mean, all the stuff that you see here is made by myself, right? Just want to that be known. <laughs> yeah, other people's assets. I don't know what you mean by that. Because what what I was what I was referring to um, is that the way the way that I make these assets is not with a unique a unique zero to one approach, right? Like I make them with trim sheets and all that stuff. So for me, that means that packing like a packing add on is not useful because I'm mapping stuff on trim sheets that go outside of the zero to one space. That's what I that's what I meant by that. So good. I thought I thought it was uh, a little confusing how I brought it up. Wait, so wait, what is all this stuff? That's number three. That's number five. That's number four. I don't. Do I need number three? Is that this one? Oh, just a different texture on it. Oh yeah. Okay. Hmm. Oh, wait, let's make sure that we bake it first. There we go. It's looking better. So what does that mean? Like number five could still be useful. Number three is that guy. One, two, three, four, five. That's good. Good. So I just need to finish number five then. I do. What else can we do here?
need a normal table. Storage. <clears throat> oh, some some animal stuff. That would be, be nice. Well, to be fair, I don't... Am I going to put animals in cages? Like chickens or something? I want to make chickens. And maybe not having chickens in them will make the whole thing look silly. Hmm. Something to think about. No, I don't have chickens made. No. Um, I do have chicken cages. Like, I got these guys, right? I have, like, little cages for, for animals. No, we're not going that route. Not doing it. Yeah, I think maybe maybe fetters is a good idea. Some taters. Do we need to bring them up to the next level now? But to be honest, the end user could always just get their own animals. Yeah, that's true. And also, like, I could not ask. <laughs> I knew what you meant, Roy. <laughs> Uh, that's true. And you know what? Like, another point there that's also really important is that if I'm gonna do chickens, I can do them. Right? I could do them. I could learn all the skills that I would need to make, like, a nice looking chicken animated and all that kind of stuff. But why not let another person who, who wants to do it, like, just make their own pack? Right? Like, it's good. I've deviated enough. I'm not gonna make chickens and all that stuff. No. That's where I draw the line. Yeah, no. Flies maybe. Because I can I can make an excuse for flies, right? <laughs> but horses, hell no. Those are really tricky to animate. Like a chicken? kind of okay like a bird like a bird yeah if, if they're far away you know like you can make some particle birds yeah um horses hell no 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 way that's beyond my pay grade Man, Roy, what's happening to you to your keyboard, man? What's what's rugging a horse? <laughs> um, is also saying, are you gonna be adding some weapons and armor stands? Weapons? Yeah, I think so. Armor? I don't think so. I think armor will be a little bit too complex. Maybe, you know what? No, maybe I'll keep it to to the non-violent stuff. 
Because honestly, I don't really have an interest in making making weapons or armor. No real in, no real interest in that. So I'd rather stay with like all the mundane stuff, right? Like the marketplace and like fruits and vegetables, all that kind of stuff, and let other people take care of like the weapons. Yep, exactly. It's like, I'll stick to the stuff that I like to make, right? So, I like to make markets. I like to think about the world, but when it comes to a weapon, like a weapon is a weapon, right? Like, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't really do anything for me, personally. Yeah, at some point I will. Like, if this is done, I'm probably going to put it on the marketplace. Because why not, right? Some guy out there probably loves making chicken, so he'll appreciate it. Oh, yeah, 100%. There's probably going to be a guy that's known as a chicken guy out there. Just making chickens all day. Like, if you want high detail chickens, that's the guy to talk to. Sounds like a joke, but there's there must be a there must be a person like that. Just like the market guy. Hell yeah. Donald Sanders. <laughs> yeah, I think hmm. Maybe making chickens is kind of stretching stretching the use of those words, huh? <laughs> I think that's a different definition of making chickens when we're talking about Colonel, Colonel Sanders. Bags. Bags of potatoes. Where's my bags? No. She. I don't even know what I selected anymore. Oh, that's just great. It's a weird system, this. What PC are you running? Um. Oh, good question. I run like a Ryzen 5900X and an RTX 3090 with 64 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz assume your potatoes and food is unique it's a mix. So it's a mix of unique potatoes and then a tileable underneath it. But I gotta admit, like the tileable definitely needs some work. I did a quick job on it. But that's a cool thing, right? Like when you have a couple of potatoes, you can you can just put them in like a tileable formation, bake that down onto a plane with those unique potatoes, right? Like it's good for reuse. Me Metia, hope I pronounced that correctly. Oh, hey, discovered your channel like a week ago and so far it's been awesome and extremely helpful. Now I finally got time for a stream, so I want to thank you personally. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for popping in and saying so. I could imagine the chicken guy making a chicken trim sheet. <laughs> oh my god. You don't know how relevant that is to some of the other stuff that we're doing. Like, um, we had a conversation where one of the people that we're working with at this moment um, was showing off like the scans that they made of chicken legs. 
So, yeah. We've been, we've been having fun with, uh, with talking about chicken leg scans. Oh, what, what was I looking for? Bags. Some bags in. You need chicken legs in this in the sea, not gonna lie. Would have eaten them in medieval times. Yeah, but peasants didn't really have access to that, right? Like meat was very sparingly used, or it was like scraps of meat that they would do in like a stew or something like that. And I'm talking in reference to like early medieval ages, right? That's kind of the reference point that I'm always using when I talk about the scene. Um Yeah. Meat was not as widely available. Like I think, I think fish, right? Because we're so close to a river at this point, like fish kind of makes sense, but like any, any type of other meat was probably more for, what do they call Like the landlords or whatever they call them, right? Yeah, um, I made, that's a very good point, Populous. Um, I made a new list of actual, actual stuff actual not stuff um actual what's the name dang it stuff that you farm oh my god i have a brain fart at the moment have a look assets food yeah crops that's it so Got uh, small artichokes, got Brussels sprouts, got cauliflower, uh, parsnips, rutabagas, got spelt for, for making making bread and all that stuff, got squashes, and got like a tomato trellis as well. Um, kind of depends on the region, right? I wanted to make like a selection of most of these things. Um, but yeah, that was like... The stuff that I could find that was like relatively common, but it probably also depends on the region and all that stuff, right? So it's going to be like a selection of just like generic stuff, right? And then trying to make those things like pretty authentic. So not having the typical like giant, like, um, what is it? Like grain, but like actual have like the medieval sized grain. That's more more in tune with the size that it was back then it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting some bread as well um Well, I don't want to add a shelf to this, necessarily. I think I'm just going to keep it to, like... Small stuff, right? Because I'm also imagining that this is going to be somewhat portable, right? That you can imagine that this is a guy coming in with a horse-drawn horse carriage or something like that. And then going back to his farm at the end of the day, too. Village making is one thing I'm yet to make properly and how I want them, especially those stuff like crops and stuff. Yeah. It's fun. It's nice to make a bit of foliage. Thank you. 
What more can we add? Got a deep dive into that since I'm planning on revamping the foliage in my scene and adding some new ones. Yeah, the the way the way that I approached diving deep into foliage is I I made like a project dedicated to like learning foliage. Um, so I went from like knowing no foliage to doing like a project dedicated on it. That's that's kind of the approach that I took on like a lot of my skills. Where I was just like, cool, I'm just gonna make like one thing that's purely focused on it. So, well, I kind of did some foliage here, I guess, but oh my god, this is, this is such a mess. This was just, yeah, just not great. Very manual, you know, like I just sculpted it, baked it down, and then just, I don't know, added like bushels of like things on top of it. But then, yeah, we get to something like this, where it was more refined, like, more thought, thought out, like, yeah. I know, it's very interesting, like, that approach of going, like, from, from one skill to the next with, like, a project. I, I do really like that approach myself. Let's go let's add a little rush light. What else can we add? So much stuff in here. Hmm. That's a good idea. Hmm. Trying to think what else I can add, right? Like, oh yeah. I want some somewhere to chit, somewhere to sit. My god. Stool. Let's get one of those in here. little addition just chuck that under there and like a little bucket underneath it do you have all of your main assets made now or do you still have a big list um i don't really have a list that's the the first thing Right? I I just basically go and I look at like my my thing here and I look at it on like an area basis. So yeah, what I usually do, for example, like I had a period when I was work, working on the blacksmith, right? So you can see all this blacksmith stuff here. And then I do like a whole bunch of research on like, okay, what are the components of like making a good blacksmith shop? So then um the asset list kind of grows out of it right and the same is going to happen with like a rope maker for example 
right? Um, I do have some ropes, but I have not... I don't even know what this is supposed to be. Like, this asset. Or what some of this stuff is supposed to be, right? Like, this stuff looks awesome. So, yeah. I kind of I kind of take it by by like area by area and I just keep moving on from like one thing to the next. And the same same happens here, right? Like um weaving baskets, like how does that happen? Like what are the steps involved with it? And then I try to pick out like the big assets that I need. Same with masonry as well. So what I what I do have for now is I have most of the water mill most of the paint shop, I think all of the paint shop, honestly. I think the paint shop is in a pretty good state. The carpenter is in a really good state. The blacksmith is in a decent state. Um, let's have a look. Watermill also talked about that. And then the rest of it is kind of like, let's say 50% or something like that. Where I do have like baskets already right i just don't have like the in-between steps yet and i do have like some of these tables and some of the rocks already made just not really the tools yet or like the actual location so that's what i mean right like this project is just like whatever i want to move next i'll kind of pick it up and then start start working on it uh, but yeah, because how many how many assets are we are we at right now? Let's see, so six hundred and seventy assets. Keep in mind that let's say a hundred of them are probably going to be cut because they're just like legacy assets or like just placeholder stuff, right? Um, but yeah, I've I've got like a whole bunch of this stuff, like the the paint shop, I think. Might be broken, but let's have a look. Should do save. How many unique? What do you mean? Unique as in like textured zero to one or like unique looking assets from each other? Because if we're talking about like unique looking assets from each other, yeah, I mean. 600 right, because like most of this is just like baskets buckets uh cages candles cards like all of it i mean yeah if if we have to count like this kind of stuff right where it's like the same the same fish but then slightly angled differently yeah i mean and sure Or do you count, like, these pots? Do you count them as one? Or do you count them as separately? Right, because if... Yeah, if I were to count, like, all of it as separately, then, then yeah, that's the number. 670 that we're looking at. <laughs> um go to another scene we're getting quite to the end as well so that's the city entrance presentation level um... oh fuck off all these auto saves so annoying Yes. Yeah, so I have this area, right? Which is like the carpenter area where I have like all the components already in place. They just need to be polished up a little bit. Right? But like all the components are already like in in like a decent place. 
And so like the carpenter area is pretty much done. Um, just apart from the, the polishing, right? Um, oh, I think, I think I removed like the paint shop. Uh, we've got like another marketplace here, which is like completely decimated over time. <laughs> got like a whole bunch of other tests here for like different workshops. Uh, carpenter example, test level. Wait, I did. I mean, some of some of the assets are completely wrongly orientated, but this is like the paint shop, right? Where like all the components, like you have like different strainers on the wall. You have like areas where they kind of mash the ore. But they have like areas where they mash the ore, like the pigment ore into like different colors. Um, there's also going to be an exterior area where they burn the ore in to get like different sort of pigments. Um, and then this would be like an interior fireplace. And then this would all be like different colors, but like the decal shader kind of screwed up. So they all look the same right now. Yeah, like a lot of this stuff is already made, right? It's just not polished yet. How far did you go with customizing your Blender UI and hotkeys? I spent like a, a week hyper optimizing my 3ds Max for speed and comfort and I'm kind of lazy to make that same effort again. Is it worth it? If it only took you a week, then yeah, it's probably worth it, right? Um, I didn't do it like as a conscious thing. Like the thing that I did was just over time when I noticed something wasn't really working, I would just change it up. But I don't really have like a very custom setup, honestly. Like, I pretty much use it, like, out of the box. Um, -da -dum. Yeah, I don't even know what these old levels are. Let's have a look. Is that test level? save hi Fibu. I'm doing good thank you how are you doing I would say 100% worth it yeah um Oh, I only ask because it was a comment from my marketplace review. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'll get to that once I once I get to it, right? Like currently what's happening is like this project is in like this weird phase where there's a lot of test stuff still in there, a lot of placeholder stuff, and I need to cut that out before I can make an accurate judgment on that. I don't think this test level is going to load, but we'll give it some time. Um, Puppet is also asking, um, what would you reckon that the job market is right now for accepting juniors into the industry? I was wondering how I would fare finding a job after this project since I don't really have a college degree or anything else. Um, yeah, we talked about that before, right? A college degree doesn't mean that much. Like, no one really cares about your degree. Um, like the, the main thing that's going to stand out is the work, right? So it's hard to tell, especially, especially trying to base it on like future predictions, right? Like, I don't know what the job market is going to be like in like a couple weeks, months, whenever you finish this project, right? So it's hard for me to tell. Um, right now it is pretty tricky for juniors out there, but I think it's getting less so over time so yeah it all depends on the work 
put out good work and people will figure it out. Well, yeah, putting out good work is a crucial thing there, right? Because you can you can make good stuff, but if you don't spread it around and don't do a little bit of marketing, then no one's ever going to see, right? Matia is saying, for me, the number one priority is to move my left hand as less as possible and to get easy access to stuff hidden behind menus and stuff. Yeah. The thing that really helped me when we're talking about Blender is the quick menu. Like, quick favorites is, like, such a time saver. Like, honestly, like, I love it so much. Like, and whenever, whenever I'm like, oh, that was a cool thing. So let's say, uh... Let's say, oh, I got something in here. Oh, I actually use this a lot. You can just assign to quick favorites. That helps me a lot. The only thing that I hate is that you can't, well, at least vanilla, you can't really set different dividers. But yeah. First time I see this feature, I picked it up. Picked up more tips from just live stream than from working in it for a year. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It crashed. I think that's also a good moment to just kind of ramp it, ramp it up, like ramp it down rather. Um, yeah, but there's there's a whole bunch of tips and tricks like that. You know, it's just I think the difficulty is from from my end is knowing what is valuable to people. Because we're so used to it now, right? Like I use so many add-ons and so many buttons and do so many things that are like second nature to me now that I think are just, I don't know, sort of understood or are like common knowledge, right? But it's not. Like it's an assumption that we make as well. So yeah, it's interesting. That's why these live streams are valuable, at least to people, right? Because you get like the, the raw workflow you get to see how i work and like all the quirky things that i do within it um... okay i think this is a good place to leave it off we've been streaming for almost five hours thank you so much all for being here i really appreciate it um if you want to if you want to check out some more resources go to our website i think it's linked in the description below um, go check that out. As a last question, uh, Matia is coming in with something. Um, have you tried the Pi Menu Editor add-on? It's perfect to set up easy Pi menus for all that stuff you need and even helps with some simple scripts. Yes, I did try, um, but I don't like Pi menus anymore. I don't know why. It is just, I don't know. Like ever since I moved from Maya to Blender, I don't know, something switched where I don't really have the urge to use pie menus anymore. Like, I kind of find them awkward and cumbersome. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the settings, but I'm too lazy to go into the settings of the pie menu. So here we are. <laughs> it's a good suggestion, though, for other people that are into pie menus, like the pie menu editor, because I have seen people use it and it looks really nice where you can set up your own pie menus. It's just, yeah, it's a personal thing again, right? Make Blender your own. Um, customize it to your needs. That's what it's there for. Thank you for the question. Okay, uh, go check out our website. Uh, subscribe, like, and all that good stuff here on YouTube. Um, and then I'm going to be out. I'll be back on Wednesday. I think Wednesday is going to be the next stream for Work in Progress Wednesday. And then... If you just want to see me work, join back next Friday. Thank you all for being here. And bye-bye, Sebastian. Thanks for popping in for the last couple of seconds. <laughs> see y'all later, people. Stay creative. Bye-bye.